Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, and we are going to talk about ways that we can represent process data graphically and uh, curve fits to these. I am going to do this using Excel, but you're welcome to use your favorite tool. This is not a course in Excel, so I'm going to show you how I you know, might do this. I'm not going to show you every way to do it, and I'm not even necessarily going to show you what I would say was the best way. I'm going to show you the quickest and easiest way to do these things. So, <clears throat> I'm going to go through several different kinds of examples. We're going to fit a straight line. I have the first example we're going to look at is going to be a spring. And remember, force is the spring constant times x, the displacement. So I would expect this one to be a straight line fit. We're going to look at another example where capacitors are charged and then the voltage dissipates. And this is expected to vary exponentially. So how can we get a curve fit for this one? Others, like reaction rates, um, typically follow power law. Okay, We'll talk about that. And then we'll talk about one where we don't know what the form is. So let's go to Excel and see what we end up with. So, and it put it on the wrong screen. Can I make it change? There we go. Okay, we got it over here. So, my first example is to find a straight line fit. So the easiest thing to do is to simply highlight the data. And then we're going to insert. And it's easiest if you just go ahead and insert a graph. And normally, if you were wanting a well-formatted graph, you would make sure you labeled your axes. Um, this is uh, the force on this one and the distance here. If you don't like that, I can edit this and switch it so that I put the distance as uh, this one and the force is the other one. But I'm happy with it the way it is. Um, you can do all sorts of things with the graph. But what I want to talk about today is finding curve fits. And again, we expect this to be a straight line, and it does sort of look like it might be a straight line. But if I were to just do this kind of by eye, you know, it's like down here it looks like a nice straight line, but then it sort of loses it a little up here, right? So that might be the curve fit that I would come up with, and I could figure out then based on my graph what the uh, constants, the slope, and the intercept would be. But I can also just come in here and if I click on the data series, if I right click on it, so I right clicked, and then I say add trend line. And again, this is not the only way to do this. It gives me trend line options. And in the trend line options, I'm going to choose a linear graph, all right? And I'm going to ask it to do something kind of crazy. I mean, well, first I want it to display the equation. I also want it to display this other r squared thing. And so this is what it's going to give me. And that line isn't too far off from what I graphed. But this is done by minimizing the squared error for each point from this line. This is the slope of, or the slope and the intercept of the line, the equation of the line, where this is force and this is position, right? My y and my x-axis. And the r squared is a measure of goodness of fit. Okay? Ideally, if it were a perfect fit, I would have r squared equals 1. For very well-controlled, well-behaved systems, I might get an r squared that is kind of in the mid 0.9 range. And for the kinds of experiments that I frequently carry out, my R squares may be very, very low. Okay? So this is the sort of thing that we'll be doing. I'm going to shrink this because I'm concerned about the way the video is going to work out. So give me a moment of... There we go. 
Okay, so let's go to our next one. Now the next one was supposed to be an exponential curve fit. So again, I'm just going to grab this, insert a chart. I like that one here. Remember, this one was expected to be an exponential curve fit. So if I click on the data and then right click, add trend line, and I tell it I want something exponential, tell it I want to see the equation, and I want to see the R squared. And you see that this seems to very nicely follow that pattern. There is my exponential curve fit, and the R squared is very, very, very close to one. Okay. My next one was a power law fit. So power law says that the reaction rate is going to be concentration to some power, and I don't know what that power is. So again, same game. Okay. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to add my trend line by right clicking on this. And this time we want it to be a power law. Display that equation. Display the R squared. And R squared is exactly equal to 1 here because I made this data up. <laughs> okay. It was definitely not from an experiment. All right, so the curve is going to be better when R squared is closer to 1. Sometimes I know what to expect for the solution, and sometimes I don't. So here's one where I have no idea what to expect. Speed and time, I don't know. I don't know what this is even the speed of. So I don't have a intuitive idea of what the answer should be. So we're going to go through the same steps. But we're going to kind of be a little, hmm, a little more trial and error for this one. So I'm going to ask it always to display the equation in the R squared. It defaults to doing a straight line. And then I can just click on these things here. So let's see, the straight line had an R squared of 0.8384. Exponential is 0.9922. Logarithmic, oh, 0.6853. That's terrible. Power law, 0.9715. So, so far, my exponential is looking really good. But then I also have the polynomial. And polynomials, do you remember that, you know, like if you have three points, you can get those to fit through a quadratic curve fit, right? That'll be perfect. But that doesn't mean that nature <laughs> would have given that quadratic curve fit. So, if I do a second order, third order, fourth, fifth, I keep getting higher and higher values of point of the R squared. I mean, 0.9998, that's awesome, right? However, nature doesn't really give me uh, formulas that turn out to be higher order polynomials, okay? Intuitively, those don't make sense. So typically, I really don't do polynomials higher than the second order unless I have justification. So I have some inside knowledge about something that I might go to a third order. Bending moments can go to a fourth order. That's pretty much it. Okay. So normally, you stay with whatever is going to be uh, physically reasonable, not just about getting the highest R squared. And so based on that, Looks like the exponential curve fit was my best fit for this data. So let's continue with this lesson. So here we go. We had a curve fit. I had an exponential function. This was not one of the ones we looked at, but just a hypothetical. I have an exponential with r squared of 0.75, second order polynomial with r squared of 0.96, or fifth order with r squared of 0.99. Which of these would you say was the best curve fit? Okay, well, this one, the r squared, is not very good. This one, the r squared, is awesome, but the model is unreasonable. So our best choice would be the second order polynomial with an r squared of 0.96. So that concludes this lesson. We are going to start looking at mass, volume, concentrations in the next lessons.